Darius's Budget Garage. Today we're going to be doing a little video of probably the least utilized tool in uh, any fab shop or garage or any kind of metalworking for that matter. I'm sure everybody's heard what a plasma cutter is and I'm sure that everybody uses a plasma cutter or associates that with making cleaner cuts or CNC plasma cut or what I'm going to be going over today is using your plasma cutter to scarf weld or make groove welds or um, I'm going to be using this plasma cutter for anything other than just cutting plates. Well, a plasma cutter truly is probably the cleanest and cheapest to run way to scarf plate or create groove welds or cut things loose or again, just cut plate or pipe or tube or notch, any of that in general. But what a lot of people don't realize is that this is probably the most cost effective way to get your scarfing done. If you're uh, cutting bracketry off, say we have a truck frame or, well, you're going to be running about five to seven dollars a whack for each cutoff wheel, or you're going to be running some cheap Harbor Freight stuff that's maybe two dollars a wheel, but you're going through three times as many of them. And using cutoff wheels is more dangerous than using a plasma cutter. Or the whole reason that I use a plasma cutter at home now is I bought a new torch setup and the first time I went to fill my acetylene bottle, I had a big AC5, big tank. It was going to be $600 to fill that tank. Well, on that very same day in that very same weld store, they had my Thermodynamic Cutmaster 42 on clearance for $800 out the door. So, sold the OxyFuel setup and I've been all plasma at home since that day. No, it doesn't entirely replace a OxyFuel torch, but it is by far the cheapest thing to operate. I can get new electrodes and tips on Amazon for minimal money, and a plasma cutter never runs out of plasma. So as I was saying earlier, I've got just the standard run-of-the-mill Thermodynamic Cutmaster 42, and there it is. And in this case today, I'm running on 240 volt power, so I've got my dial set to about 30 amps. What you will see on some plasma cutters is there is there are different options for cutting, scarfing, piercing. Uh, well, my machine doesn't have that, so we're going to set it at 30 amps. Uh, well, the guy that's maybe cutting bracketry off their frame, cutting bracketry off their axle housing, if they're doing some kind of suspension work. And that's just the world I live in. There's all kinds of things that aren't coming to my mind right now that you can use a plasma cut to scarf and save yourself a lot of time and a lot of grinding and not risking messing yourself all up with a cutoff wheel because we all probably have a story of a grinder kicking back and probably getting a hold of you. And uh, well, nothing in your eyeballs. So anyways, enough of that. We're gonna get to scarfing. So obviously we're not trying to cut through this plate, we're trying to get rid of this weld that's put into this plate. So naturally you're not going to point the torch straight at it because, well, that's uh, the air jet following it is trying to blow straight wherever that air jet's going. So we're going to run back here and you're going to run your torch way lean back, uh, well, almost the most angle you can get it at and still keep the arc lit. Some plasma cutters are pretty finicky about uh, having uh, good good arc length or whatever you want to call it. I can stay pretty laid back. Sometimes you may have to tip this guy in to initiate the, uh, the plasma arc. And once you're going, you can kind of lay back on it and you just work that weld out of there. So what I like to do is, well you can see there, I was kind of washing back and forth. Um, a lot of times I'll take the majority of the weld out with my first pass, and now that I've got it down close to just the original two pieces of base metal, then you can really get in there and uh, fine tune. Kind of, you want to get in there and kind of find what I like to call the crack line. Once you get that initiated, it's pretty simple to follow that thing right on out.
So, I don't need to, but for the sake of the camera, I'm gonna clean some of this slag off here. Give you a look at what I did. So there's a nice clean scarf. I did get into the uh, base metals a little bit, but nine times out of 10, you're gonna do that with a cutoff wheel anyways. That took a lot less time to remove the material and it's gonna take a lot less time to grind and clean up. So now we'll smack it with a hammer and see how easy it comes apart. There we go. We got minimal, minimal material left on here. Basically no damage to the base material. So as you can see there, pretty much in real time, that was, uh, didn't take very long to do that. Keep in mind, I had to have the camera kind of like right where I wanted to work. So it, uh, the scarf wasn't quite as clean as I could have made it. But uh, well, I wanted to get you right front and center to kind of see how I was working the torch. So again, I take my first pass and I get it down close to the, uh, the fusion line. Now we're gonna go through again and uh, we're gonna get it right down to see the crack line, I like to call it. And there we can see, we've got our tube knocked off of there and there is very little material left on here. Should be fairly easy to clean up. Next, we're gonna get into scarfing out weld in a butt joint like this. So there we go. There's a clean excavated, uh, it was a weld with a slight groove I put in it and uh, there it is, excavated real nice. Again, if I was to spin all the way around this guy, it would be uh, very minimal cleanup and uh, you've got two clean plates that are reusable and uh, no damage done, no sweat on the brow. Using a plasma torch is probably the most underused process when it comes to fabricating. It's more than just a tool for cutting plate. It can cut plate, it can gouge out weld, it can create grooves, you can bevel plate. Get out there and get the most out of every tool in your shop.